What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with another episode of the Planet Survival Guide. So what we're going to focus on today is very much on early game power management and the fact that right now this atmospheric lander is not really complete in that respect. All I've really done since the last episode is I've plugged in our mining ship over there so that's all connected up both so it can recharge but also so I can unload the material out of it. Although I haven't really done anything with that yet because we're not going to need it quite yet. So the first thing we're going to do is come up here and I'm going to talk a bit about a mod I've now got running. And it's a mod that you won't be able to see any evidence of, but helps a lot with how power is handled. So basically, as how Space Engineers works at the moment is very, very poorly optimised. It tries its best to use your batteries rather than your solar panels to power things. The problem with this is, charging up a battery intrinsically has a 20% power loss, so it's not totally efficient. And by doing so, you not only waste a lot of the power coming from the solar panels, but you also don't fully efficiently charge up your batteries. What this mod does, called PowerFix, is basically change the priority order to put solar panels at the top and reactors at the bottom. So it's really easy to install. I'll put all the information down in the video description so you can go and grab the links directly to the mod. I understand that for some people, you're not going to be able to install this because you're playing on a server somewhere that you don't have control over. Now, the PowerFix does actually work on servers, but you'd need to either own the server or be able to persuade the admin to put it on for you. So in that case, you're very much going to have to worry more about manual battery management. The last thing we're going to do in here before we go on and talk a bit about some of the other things we can do to help is we're going to queue up some of the bits we actually need for this. So if we go into your production and go over to large blocks, you can actually go in here and see the material requirements as far as ore is, ingots is concerned for what we're going to build. And we're going to go down the bottom and find these modules. And these are designed to plug into both the refinery and the assembler to make it more efficient. And what we really want early game is power efficiency. So I'm actually just going to click on this three times, and you can see it's going to queue up the materials for three versions of that, which is cool, but we don't need all these steel plates, which is fine because I haven't gone and turned the assembler on yet either. So if we go in here and turn it on, there's still that slight issue where it won't start building it because it doesn't think we've turned it on. That's fine. We can remove the steel plates to kick it into action. And I'm actually going to get rid of all of the steel plates from there because I'm pretty certain. Yeah, we've got 364 already. We're not going to need those. There are a couple of other blocks we do need, so we're going to want a timer block, and we're going to want a programming block wherever it's gone. There we go. One of these, and an LCD panel. And that's for a few bits we're going to do later. First up, we're worrying about this power efficiency module. But as you can see, this is all queued up, going through, and I'm just going to leave that there and cut back once all of that is made so that we can go through the rest of the video in one swift go. The only thing, of course, you want to watch out for while doing this, just make sure your batteries have got plenty of power left. As you can see, these... 14 hours, 3 hours, 3 hours, 18 hours, it's not going to take that long for the assembler to run. So we're absolutely fine. In your case, you might need to leave the batteries charging for a day before you can start doing this work. But after we've done all this, you won't need to in future. So I've now got all the parts made and ready to go and build these bits, but it is worth noting quickly that I got very, very low on both iron and nickel here. So it might be a case that you need to actually go and turn your refinery on and start making some, but we should have plenty from that first mining trip to use. It's also worth noting that the reason we're taking this route, so the reason we're going with these power efficiency modules, rather than, say, building more batteries or building more solar panels, is because of the materials they use. So if we just go, I need to get it out onto the bar, so find an empty slot. You're going to have a look at what materials these are actually making up of. It's steel tubes, steel tubes, construction components, plate. It's all stuff that only uses iron and nickel, the most common components. So this is a lot, lot cheaper than, say, trying to build another solar panel, which, of course, is using solar cells, which require silicon. And silicon is one of the things that we really need to keep hold of at the moment because it's used in a lot of the more advanced stuff. So anyway, at this point, we can get the power efficiency module out, and we can also grab out the programming block, the timer block, and the single LCD panel that we got the parts for. We're not going to use those quite yet, but we can get that out now. And we're going to come over into the corner here where the assembler and the refinery is. So this is sort of next to that cargo container I've been using, just tucked over here. And we're going to start hacking away at the floor. And this is to kind of open up a hole that we can get down. And if we use one of these triangular blocks a bit like that, you can then use that to sort of climb further down and keep removing the blocks that are underneath the refinery. And what this is going to do, if you remove the right one, so don't remove the block here because that's holding the atmospheric thruster on, but remove the right ones under here, and I apologise for the poor view, but it is a tight little space down here, you can get access to a whole bunch of these ports on the bottom of the refinery. And this is where we're going to put this power efficiency module. 
So if we, where's our power efficiency? There we go. Line this thing up and make sure it is the right way around so it looks like it'll sit there. That's not the right way up. Need it like that with the ports that are on the bottom pointing upwards. And then we can just put it into position and weld the thing up. So make sure you don't fall off here. And we'll put a couple of these down because right early game like we are now, it's power that's slowing everything down. You know, we could have refinery and assembler running the whole time building components and doing things that we need. The only thing preventing that right now is the fact that we just don't have enough power for it. So I've also apparently not bought enough steel plate with me because I forgot that I didn't didn't build the steel plate. I had to pick it up from there, but still. There we go. So we've got a pair of those now made, and what I tend to do at this point to prevent further problems is get rid of our little ramp there and just fill the hole back in again so you don't fall out the bottom of your ship because it does hurt falling at that height. And then from here we can now go back in and notice that when we go to the control panel for that refinery, it's now only going to use 250 kilowatts rather than the 560 it did before because it's much, much more power efficient. And because of this, we can now actually afford to leave the refinery on. So we're going to turn the refinery on, we're going to turn the conveyor system on, and this is going to mean that from this point on, if we go to the inventory, not the production, it's just chugging away, converting what we've bought, and it's also going to start pulling stuff from other containers if there is any, if it runs out of things to do. And we can afford to do that now because it's not so much of a drain on our power that it's going to be a problem. So these batteries here, you can see seven hours, days, days, days. The, you know, the time cycle on this planet is not so long as that these won't last. So from that respect, we're looking a lot, lot better, even though at the moment you can see the solar panels aren't really producing anything. The next thing we can do, and this is going to help a lot with the power efficiency, is actually introduce a bit of scripting into the mix. So if we come up the top here, we can go over to round in the corner where there's a little interior light on the wall that we're going to need to remove first. And these can be a bit of a pain to target without getting the block behind them. And then where we've made this space in the corner, we're going to drop both the timer block and the programming block that we got out. And now we need to do a bit of setup work on them. So the first things first is we're going to go into the programming block. Don't worry about this, please recompile program because it doesn't have one yet. And we're going to go edit and we're going to browse the workshop and you will have a link down below the video which will give you this Freya battery management and this is designed to work alongside the PowerFix mod although the PowerFix mod is not required you can use it without it just has a few slight niggles and what it's going to do is help you manage the batteries so if we double click on that just make sure it's come in to paste it in correctly and click remember and exit that side of things is nicely set up then we need to go down to our timer block and it helps to rename this just so you can remember what it is so we're going to call this Freya timer and in here we're going to put the programming block we just put down set to run nothing in this box and then we're going to put itself at the end set to start and the last thing we want to do now is change this delay here down to one second and that's pretty much everything set up except we want to be able to see what exactly it is that this script is doing so if we and this is a bit debatable where you want to put it I kind of like putting it down here because this is where I spend all my time at the moment so it's easiest to manage or easiest to monitor but we can put a LCD panel on the wall here weld that up as well and we want to call this one Freya display and it's important to make sure that you get all the capitalization and everything correct for this I'll call this Freya display make sure it's on we're going to make sure that on the screen we're showing the public text and then that's almost everything set up. The last thing we now need to do is go down to the bottom and just run this timer. So we're going to click start. You can see that that started working and it's repeating itself over and over again. And if we remove this, bing. So we now have all the information about what's going on on our ship. So you can see here at the top, it thinks it's daytime at the moment and that's entirely based upon how much power it's getting from the solar panels. It's giving us a warning that we don't have any backup reactors, which we're going to move on to in a second. And then you can see that it's telling us that we've got panels up there. They're not all at full percentage, but they're doing enough. It's going to give us information about our reactors and our batteries. And then at the bottom, battery charge level, and then each one of those little sort of upwards arrows indicates a battery that's either charging or discharging or nothing at all. So you'll either get upwards arrows, downwards arrows, or flat lines. And it just means that with one quick glance at this screen, you know exactly what's going on with all the power situation on this craft now. And I believe, in fact, even the color of this LCD will change depending on how well charged the ship is. So now that's all Freya set up, and you just now need to leave that running. It's using very little power, but giving you this quick glimpse at 
what, what's going on with the power situation. But the other thing it's going to do, and you see it says day mode at the moment, if we go in here into the control panel, all these batteries are going to be set to recharge because it knows that right now the solar panels can handle doing that. So we're getting free power from the solar panels going into the batteries. As soon as we don't have enough power coming from those solar panels, this is going to switch into night mode, which turns the charge off. And at that point, the batteries start helping the ship run. And it means at no point do you run out of power, and at no point are you inefficiently charging your batteries. Now, the final thing we need to do before I talk about sort of where things go from here is we have an assembler in this ship as well, and that could do with one of these power efficiency effi well, that could do with one of these power efficiency modules too. So the way to get at this one is to come up onto the top floor here. You can see the refinery there. And the assembler is kind of down underneath this oxygen generator. And the way to get at it best is this block in the corner. So if we take this block out and fall down the gap, you can kind of see where we sit in relation to the, uh, the uh, thrusters there. We want to go down one further. And at this point, we're at the side of the assembler. So here's our assembler. We can remove the block next to us there. And you can see that this is the two ports we now want to connect to. The only thing you're going to need to do to get at it is obviously we need somewhere to go and stand for this. Unfortunately, you can stick a block just there to get off the back. Just don't forget to bring all the materials with you because this is the point where you really want to be able to weld this up in one go. You don't want to have to try and get back here again afterwards. So if we weld the whole thing up, I've of course got the materials on me and we can then remove what we're standing on from underneath us just for neatness sake and land on that foot there which actually breaks off all. So now we're down, that means our assembler is now running with an efficiency module attached. And you can see that we haven't fortunately detached the engine, but you are pretty close on that side. So be very aware, you might want to go and weld up those blocks just to make sure you don't make a mistake. Last thing you want is one of your large atmospheric thrusters rolling around in the snow. But if we now come up to the control panel, we'll be able to see in here, our assembler is now using considerably less power too, because it's got this 150% power efficiency, it's doing using our power a lot less and so everything is now much more capable of lasting for long periods of time. So as you can see stuff still on charge, not really charged up a huge amount because we don't have that much input to it but that will keep things running nicely. So finally there's this question of where to go from here and the series is not going to end at this point but from this point it's very much more about expansion and so what I'm going to start saying from here on out is going to be much more about theories about scaling it up rather than this is how you should do it. However, there is some stuff that's still very important before we're truly established, and it's going to make that a lot easier. The first thing is what Freya was complaining about on the screen in there, which is that we don't currently have any sort of emergency backup power, in that we've got a nuclear reactor, but there's no uranium for it. So my first step at this point would be to take preferably the rover, as that uses so little power. But if you needed to, if the terrain was sort of that way inclined, the miner, and go and find some uranium somewhere nearby. There will be some, you might have to travel a little way, but there will be some that you can get at, especially as, don't forget, the rocks now can have ore inside them as well, so they're worth checking out. Often the rarer ore is in the rocks too. And then get some of that backup uranium. So in my case, we set up these GPS markers in the first episode, and I actually found some uranium on that trip. So I would turn this uranium on and sort of see it's about 3,500 meters that way. I can do that in the rover. I would get over there and I might even mine it by hand for the case of the uranium, simply because we don't need much. But what I do want is to get some so that we've got that fallback plan. So we're never going to be completely stumped if we make a mistake. The other thing that now is going to start becoming important is that we need silicon. Uh, silicon we've been using so far has all come from tearing down our own windows. And that's we've only got a little bit of window left there. We're going to need to make some ourselves at some point. And these are the bits that make up batteries, they make up solar panels, they're really important at this stage of the game. So again, what I would do is, using that first sort of exploratory trip, I would go and find a decent silicon waypoint. And in this case, I know that this one was 15 meters from the surface, so it's going to be nice and easy to get at. And in fact, it turns out to be over there with the uranium too. So in this case, I actually would take the miner, I would go over there and do a whole bunch of mining of uranium and a whole bunch of mining of silicon getting ourselves set up for where I'm going to go in future with this series, which is sort of from this point, it stops becoming something where I can say, hey, this is how you should do it, and starts becoming something where I can say, well, here's some ways in which you can do this. Choose how you want to expand. So things are going to kind of go in that direction from here on out, but as a precursor and a kind of setup for that, a bit of uranium and some silicon is really going to help. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. It was a bit of a 
lots of me talking, not a much actually happening sort of episode. But hey, it was about power and Paolo's kind of like that. Hopefully you found it useful anyway. Don't forget to check out both Freya and Powerfix by Craig Perko. The links are down in the video description and they are super duper handy. Take a lot of the annoyance out of power management. If you and of course, if you did like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Uh, it really does help me in the channel. And if you didn't like it, let me know down in the comments how I can improve. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.